call this a vantage point video. I'm host Eric, host talking to fans people, and welcome to these thoughts. It's about boxes. It represents a vantage point that says, okay, time to stop feel we've accomplished recently in a abstract sense. And The answer is a lot. All kinds of shit I've accomplished my physically. Not much physically, but all kinds of shit I've physically. I'm coming into my own as an individual who manifests a purposeful course of action <coughs> To attain significant and meaningful changes and to be the person he wants to be and to, to be as a person ought to be in general. I'd like, I'd like to believe both that I have the ability to behave morally and the ability to understand what it means to behave morally. I'd like to think that I understand that much more clearly than most people do. Because many people don't want to hear, necessarily, because it sounds arrogant or something. I behave more morally than most people. It would be an arrogant claim. But I do. Most people don't behave either morally or immorally. They don't understand ethics well enough to take moral action. There's a sense that, well, the introverted feelers are the most moral because they really know what's, what's proper, you know, and what's authentic in terms of morality. But introverted feeling is not where our ethics come from. Neither is extroverted feeling. Our ethics come from the reality that our feelings can register crimes of logic. Crimes of logic are called unfairnesses. Why are they unfair? Never because of how they feel. The feeling is an acknowledgement of what's really wrong. A failure to apply reciprocal burdens. So, we feel in this world where most folks aren't really capable of behaving ethically, one way or the other. Or even, you know, a lot of people at the worst ends of society aren't incapable of behaving immorally, which means they do so all the time. They don't know what it means. have no means to translate the feelings that a a crime of anti-reciprocity, which is a logical warrant, not a feelings-based warrant. Um, they don't understand the feeling of that is generated within a person, a feeling of unfairness when a crime of reciprocity has been committed on a metaphysical plane, they don't understand what that feeling actually means. They don't understand why something is moral or immoral. And their feeling is not a very reliable judge of when that uh, reciprocity burden has not been met. But the reciprocity burden exists nevertheless and is often not met. And if you're not attuned well to it, you may not even experience the negative feeling consequences. That doesn't make it okay. Because everybody else is affected too. It sets precedent. It establishes how the paradigm rolls. It says, who can get away with what bullshit? Oh, well, if you let people get away with bullshit, then what happens? That bullshit becomes okay bullshit. It's not bullshit anymore. It's like, well, that's tolerated. That's not tolerated. So, 
Here's the deal. I am moving through the world blessed and cursed concurrently. I genuinely am blessed and cursed with a an oddly sheltered or naive life history or something. I don't know. It's weird because I wasn't really sheltered or naive, but I... Uh, I never really got that close to the cliff edge. Now this backstory is absolutely true, but it's extremely misleading. It suggests my current incarnations of my behavior are somehow done with a lack of awareness. It suggests that because I'm willing to display my natural somewhat childlike nature that I am therefore inherently oblivious to my own childlike nature which mistakes childlike for a child I'm anything but oblivious I'm aware of how this shit plays I'm trying to walk a very tight line and it's much more complicated and much more considered, well considered, and people understand. I don't want to present myself falsely. I'm not trying to pretend I don't know how all this shit plays. I get it. I understand how people are in fact influenced by things that are not relevant. For example, if I seem genuinely oblivious that somehow makes people think that they can approach an idea more safely. And when they do approach the idea more safely, then they have to engage with the actual idea. And even though I rarely leave conversations with somebody saying, you changed my mind, to expect that is to misunderstand the way the discursive engine works. So, we're coming and giving me ideas. Of course, my ideas are always evolving too. I'm not saying they're not helping me hone my ideas, but their ideas typically are much less used to being challenged in an effective way, in a meaningful way. And that means being real, caring about shit, caring. What do you care about? It's like we're also we're also cool, you know. And we all say no. Because no is cooler. But fuck being cool, you know? I mean, what do you really care about? What do I care about? I care about a lot of shit. I care about a lot of shit. And I'm guilty of it too. I go, I don't really care. Whatever. I do really care. I really care about truth and justice. I really care about treating other people well. I really care about not being careless with people's hearts, too. So, I know that there's a lifelong problem I have with not choosing to display in ways that are reassuring to people. Let me take this brief opportunity, then, to reassure everybody. It only looks like I'm about to fall over. I know what I'm doing. Everything's cool. Because not only do I know what I'm doing, but I'm... One part of my life history that will always define me is the fact that I've spent most of my life being a massive failure. So... When I go to decide to achieve something, it's not for the purpose of achieving it in a vacuum. It's achieved through that context of understanding how hard it is to be human 
in a world where people are constantly lying to each other. How difficult it is to be human in a world where people are constantly hiding things from each other. To be human in a world where people are accepting as meaningful idea blocks that are deprecated, have no use, and just drag it out. One of my very favorite metaphors of all time. To tell some stubborn individual, you are going to cling to that wrongness until it drags you to the bottom of the ocean. And I won't. I'll bring plenty of wrongness around. And people will attack it. And the wrong parts will be identified and parsed away. And in the process of parsing away my wrong parts, focused on what to them appears to be positive space, they too will learn to understand reality, meaning, truth, and will entirely through the negative space of one's psychic identity. Thanks for watching Talking with Fitness, people. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese. And it appears the prince for the moment has stepped out of the shadows. And that's nicely cinematic in this drama, huh?